Hey everybody, happy Friday. Let's talk about the R18B and the R18 Transcontinental. See you after the intro. Hey guys, this is uh, Jim with my Motorrad here. Um, I am going to talk to you about the R18B and Transcontinental in this video. Um, the, re the reveal of it was actually last week on Thursday. Um, I've been kind of uh, thinking about this for a, a few days. You know what the heck I'm going to say about it, you know? Uh, like a lot of you, I watched the video that BMW uh, put out. Um, which in a lot of ways is a stark contrast to um, what Harley-Davidson does, sure. Um, Harley-Davidson, um, it's a real production. Um, you get the feeling that it's uh, almost evangelical in appeal, if you will. Uh, with BMW, for me, it came across um, a bit less polished, if you will, or um, I don't know, a little more... Um, commonplace, you know, like you could have been there talking to everybody um, or anybody in the video. Uh, it was kind of, you know, almost seemed like regular folk feel to it they tried to do. And really, um, what I came away with was uh, something in the video that they said uh, that BMW is an engineering company. Um, and that's the point of view they design motorcycles from, I guess, uh, where Harley Davidson I see as uh, design and marketing. You know, more like uh, an Apple computer or something like that. Uh, nothing wrong with either, not making a judgment on that at all, but uh, it definitely comes across in terms of the culture of uh, the companies. Uh, you can see a difference in probably even the people that ride them, uh, myself included. Uh, probably what appeals to me is that um, almost, you know, engineering more, a little more left brain uh, aesthetic, if you will, if that's possible. Anyway, so let's get on to um, what BMW uh, showed out. Um, before um, this little dialogue here, you know, I showed you a clip from uh, the reveal that they had last week with the R18B and the Transcontinental riding down a highway. It looks like it's probably California, maybe even somewhere in Arizona. Um, and whatnot. And uh, so you guys should have a good idea what they look like um, by now. And in terms of the specs and stuff, I mean, you can go to the website and look at the specs um, and whatnot. 1,802 cc's, it's uh, very over square as opposed to a lot of other V-twin cruises that are under square. Um, for those of you that might not know, that's the relationship between the bore and the stroke, specifically the ratio, if you will. Uh, BMW favors um, over square on their motorcycles for the most part, you know, bigger bore, shorter stroke. Um, for the displacement, they tend to rev a little more uh, than they otherwise would. And in this case, it would be uh, true. I mean, this thing uh, makes power, you know, all the way up to like 6,000 RPM. Anyway, that being said, you know, getting away from the stats too much, uh, the one thing that did impress me out of everything probably is the rear suspension travel. And it's the one complaint I've heard about uh, not only the R18, um, the first ones that came out, uh, and the classic, but even Harley Davidson motorcycles, and that is rear suspension travel. Uh, the, the B and the Transcontinental have 4.7 inches of rear suspension travel versus 3.5 on the regular one that we've seen for the last year or so. Um, and I think that, you know, 1.2 inches probably makes a huge difference. 
Um, your Harley Davidsons can vary anywhere from, you know, on the new sports duress, I've heard it's like one and a half or two inches, uh, with the big, uh, turning bikes can be two or three inches only. Um, and, uh, people that review them have said, you know, there are times you could use a little more, especially on the bikes with two inches of travel. It just isn't quite enough. But anyway, in terms of the BMW, I'm real happy that they kind of refined it that way to give it a little better suspension. Uh, not only that, but they also changed the relationship of uh, the forks with the triple clamps. So like the Harley Davidson's where the forks are actually set behind the steering head, uh, BMW did the same thing to kind of make the steering out a little steeper and make it better at low speed handling. So that's a real plus. That was something I said, oh, wow, that's cool. You guys, you know, want to make this thing work a little better. Um, so, so that's good. So I expect good things in terms of ride quality and, and low speed handling on the bike and high speed handling too. I imagine, um, uh, being a BMW, it's, it's going to handle very well. The, uh, the sport tours do as well as the adventure bikes, um, sport bikes and whatnot. Uh, they put a lot of attention into the engineering of their suspensions and handling and whatnot. And they work very well with that. You know, that said, um, the one thing that, I mean, it didn't surprise me really, but, um, it did in a sense is the weight. Uh, these things weigh, you know, the, the bag of version weighs 877 pounds wet. The touring version weighs 941 pounds wet. These are not light bikes. Um, really not light bikes. Uh, but you know, neither Harleys or Indians, uh, they tend to carry a lot of weight too. And the old gold wings are quite heavy. Um, so no really surprises there, uh, I guess. You know, the plus side of that is they do have 6.3 gallon gas tanks, which means they should have acceptable range for a touring motorcycle. Uh, the one thing I did like about uh, these bikes is, you know, the availability of some different colors, at least. Um, I'm not a big fan of black. Um, I don't like the Manhattan metallic, but uh, for those that do, you know, I'm, you know, they may uh, find it appealing and whatnot. I don't like matte finishes at all. But that's me, you know, I'm probably in the minority in the motorcycle world, uh, not liking mats, but I don't. Um, but it has that kind of uh, really um, interesting two-tone uh, paint that's kind of sort of like a purple and cream, I don't know. It, 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 it's, it, it's, it's, it's not uh, like they painted, uh, used a... Uh, tape to demark the, between the colors, you know, it's kind of a, an overspray feel and, you know, it looks pretty good. I think, um, what I really would have liked is if they applied the red paint that they're using on the regular R18 that for next year, if you look at, uh, some of the shots on the models coming out for 2022, there's a really nice red. And I, I think that would have been really good on, uh, the BM, the transcontinental. But that's me. I think red is a really great color for a motorcycle. Um, but again, you know, these are touring bikes. Uh, they tend to be for people that maybe might, might be a little more conservative, especially on the BMW side. BMW riders tend to be a little more staid, if you will. Um, you know, BMW is kind of famous for the 50 shades of gray or silver. Uh, very neutral palettes they usually go with with their touring bikes and uh, even sport tours. Although the new RT has a, a wonderful color blue, um, that would have also been nice to put on the uh, new R18s that they came out with, um, would have been really sharp. But again, uh, you know, it's a touring bike, it's a cruiser. BMW makes a really big point of calling it the great American cruiser. You know, these American uh, a few times in their marketing materials. So I think they're really pitching this towards the American market, obviously. Uh, the big problem, not problem, but the reaction, I guess you could say, I've seen in the BMW community uh, happened the first time around uh, when the R18 first came out. It's like the, some people, it was just rejected outright. Oh, it's a Harley. It looks like a Harley. Um, they're just copying Harley. Not really. Um, to me, the R18 is unmistakably BMW. It has a huge boxer engine. Pistons stick out on the side. You know what I mean? Uh, and and it, there's nothing else like it. 
Uh, not, you know, uh, some people might say, oh, well, Goldwing is a, a boxer engineer. It is, but let's look who called the six pistons. It is an 1800 too, but it's it's a much different uh, engine and motorcycle, which is fine. That's good. Um, but again, you know, the, the, the R18, I think, is unmistakably uh, BMW. Uh, I think it's great that they're stretching their legs a bit, if you want to call it that, you know, and horizons in terms of creating something that's different. Um, will it appeal to American riders? I have no idea. I think some will like it. I think some will find it uh, more complete than a Harley. Uh, I'm not going to probably insult. It comes standard with six-way ABS. And, um, you know, that that's one thing that you, that's an option on Harley Davidson that uh, you have to pay extra for. It's like another thousand bucks. BMW uses not only dynamic cruise control, where it uses the braking and throttle to maintain speed, but it also has, um, I guess you would call it like adaptive cruise control, where it has like a radar unit on the front and can detect uh, cars or obstacles in front of you and slow the slow the bike down accordingly, uh, speed-wise, and speed up again once those obstacles clear uh, that Harley-Davidson or Andy, nor Indian um, have right now. Uh, so there's that. And then there's a huge, like, 10.25-inch uh, TFT screen on it. Not LED, TFT. It's huge. Um, some people find that appealing and whatnot. Um, I don't know if it has Apple CarPlay. I'm thinking it probably doesn't. Uh, and this, Or Android Auto. So that might be a big deal for some people. That being said, I, th I think it's well, wait, um, well laid out. You know, you have the big TFT, you still have the analog clocks across the dash, which is really nice. I prefer analog clocks to the TFT myself. Um, you have the, uh, the Marshall stereo on it. They're really pushing that, that the sound system is top notch. And you, I think you can even get like a, an upgrade option to it as well. Uh, storage is very good. Uh, 27 liter panniers, 48 liter top case on the transcontinental. So that can hold basically two full face helmets. So again, I mean, this bike is definitely made for not only cruising, but you definitely could tour on it. You definitely could ride two up on it. Um, it should be comfortable down the road as far as the rear suspension goes. You're not going to bottom out. And if you have a bed back like I do, get pounded into shit, um, which is always a plus. Uh, so again, you know, everything looks right on paper. You know, I like some of the colors that come with it. You know, I like the purple and cream or whatever they call it, titanium maybe. Um, the black is okay. I'm not a fan of black. But given the choice, if someone said, Jim, all we have is a Manhattan, Manhattan metallic matte or the black, I, I guess I get a black bike. But, um, the purple one, the problem is, is that it's the surcharge on it's like an extra 2500 bucks, And that's a lot of scroll uh, for, uh, I think, anyone really. But if you have the money, hey, go for it. Outside of that, um, I don't know. I'm hopeful for BMW. Um, it'd be great if I got to test ride one. Hey, BMW, are you listening? Um, give me one for a day or two, a week. Definitely put it through its paces, uh, both commuting, and I'll take a trip on it. Um, definitely would be into doing that. Um, I'm really hopeful. That I guess that's the best way I could put it. I'm hopeful, and I hope. Uh, the bike sells really well, and I hope they do well. I think it's good for the industry as a whole to raise the bar, in a sense. I think Indian has tried to do that uh, to some extent. And I think, you know, BMW has stepped in and even raised it even higher again. Um, and to those of you who talk about uh, the jugs being away in terms of um, highway pegs, BMW does make a setup where you could actually lay your legs on top of the cylinders so you can kind of stretch out. Uh, so there's always that. Uh, and the good thing about a boxer twin like that is it gets airflow going across both pistons evenly. So you're going to get better cooling, whereas like with V-twins, the rear cylinder doesn't get cooled as well as the front. And in terms of longevity and whatnot, it can, you know, if you live in a hot climate, I think it would have a ne negative effect on an engine like that over time. Just my opinion. So I guess you're wondering here, okay, what's next? I don't know. Uh, when they become available, I'll definitely go to one of the local BMW dealers and see if I can get a test ride. If I hear from 
BMW. Hey, cool. I doubt it though. Um, too small of a channel and, um, I'm a little bit too much of a truth teller. You know, a lot of, um, my fellow YouTubers that get to go on these junkets, like when they have test rides and whatnot, you know, they're, they're fanboys of uh, particular brands and whatnot. And it's not critical at all. And I mean, e even in a positive sense, it's, it's like everything is wonderful. And I will come away saying, yeah, but is it for me? I don't know. You really didn't discuss the motorcycle in a way that would explain to me, would it work for me? Everything is, you know, it's like Pollyanna. Everything is wonderful. Um, I'm not like that. And, uh, you know, kind of like, you know, Scotty Kilmer felt like it is. If you like that, great. If you don't, I'm sorry. Um, but if it is great, I'll say so too. I have no compulsion about praising something if it's deserved. And hopefully with this motorcycle, um, it'll be all, you know, thumbs up. Anyway. I want to thank you guys for watching as usual. I have more videos that will be coming out. Uh, one on why BMW, another one on why not BMW. And I have a couple other things I'll be working on too. So the why and why not will kind of work with this video um, afterwards. Uh, maybe to give a little insight in terms of, you know, at least what I find either attractive or detractive with BMWs and it'll be honest in, in either direction. Um, cause that's how I roll. Anyway, you be you. Everyone else is taken and thank you for watching this vlog. I appreciate you all. Um, be good to yourself and I'll see you down the road. Thanks. Just an IT junkie A swing from no to no network Until my brain implodes I get paid a little I get pushed right